Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to part 4 of my Panther 126 build. And in this video, we're going to be completing the construction process of our Panther. So, nice thing about having a full community of very knowledgeable people, some of you have very kindly pointed out that the armored shutters were only on one side of the Panther, so I'm just going to start removing the offending pieces here. So I'm going to start temporarily attaching our running gear to our panther using some Humbrel Moscow masking fluid. So I'm just going to apply it quite thickly to the various different torsion bars here. And this is going to temporarily tack our running gear in place for the aftermarket tracks that we're going to be adding in a few minutes. So our running gear now is fixed in place and the mask all is fully dry allowing us to start assembling our full model tracks. So again a big thank you and shout out to Steve of uh, Motti's Models for supplying me these tracks so his channel should be appearing on your top right and corner so please go over support him and uh, give him a sub and a like I'm sure most of you already subscribed to his channel. So again thank you so much Steve for sending on these to me. Again this uh, community never ceases to amaze me just in how generous and how supportive it can be of each other especially too in such trying time so again thank you so much my friend so working with full tracks can be a lot of people make this seem very difficult not really i might find just basically a file and uh, a pair of pliers is enough to make most full work so what i do is i just uh, start assembling piles of 10 tracks So what I do here is just I take the piece of wire, pre-measure it, put a slight bow in it and just slide it through. I haven't drilled it in any way, I just leave slide it straight in and that's it. There's no crazy things with having to drill out every track link that you see people do. Most of the time the, the moulding on these tracks is good enough that you don't have to do that. I'm just going to show you again my steps here just to get you into the idea of how I do it. So I work in groups of 10 and I just do it in uh, 5 pairs of 2, get 10 tracks, then couple those uh, pairs together to get a run of 10 and I just keep going until I get a full run. Once you get into the swing of it, it doesn't actually take that long. It took me about 3 hours to do boat links or boat runs, taking about a day in between work and other things. Sometimes you do have to encourage the uh, track pin to go into place. So I just find sometimes just give it a slight tapping motion uh, will kind of hammer that in place. Or just use, um, in this case, my uh, clippers just to push the track pins the full way into the, um, into the tracks themselves. And then with just with a little bit of liquid CA glue, I just lock the track pins in place. Now this can be a good or a bad thing to, to do at this point. Um, I, intention, I uh, unintentionally had too many track links at first, so it didn't make having to separate the tracks to remove about three links per run a little bit tricky. I had to come in and drill out the other side and then push the pin out, so it was a bit tricky. So 82 tracks later, this is what I'm left with. 
and a beautiful set of fro model tracks and again big thank you again to steve for sending these out mate really do appreciate it And as you can see here, I just um, slowly start like dry fitting and test fitting everything together. Now at this moment, there's too many links on my track run, so I will go back and remove some. Now moving on to the turret, we're going to start working with the very basic breech block assembly that's supplied in the kit. Since the escape hatch is open, we're going to have to paint and detail this up a little bit, as it is quite visible through the open hatch. So the basic breech block assembled, now we're just going to add some cut marks to the edge of the turret armour. Again just using the exact same method as we used for the other armour plates on the lower hull. And once I'm happy with the pattern, I'm just going to slowly, or I'm just going to subtly melt it back using some liquid cement just to uh, remove some of the burring and just get it back in scale ever so slightly. Now I'm going to start working on the escape hatch. So the Tamiya kit does allow you to have this um, posable. So we're going to try to keep it that it can actually swing so we can pose it and just make it easier for painting. This actually was a little bit of a finicky little piece to put together. It did fight me a little bit, just to get everything lined up and keep everything in shot, which is always a bit tricky. But uh, it's a pretty nice little assembly. It's very basic by today's standards, but more than adequate for our needs. Because again, you're not going to see much of it. It's only a partially open hatch anyway in the photograph, so you can't see any of the locking mechanism or anything like that. So since the interior is going to be very partially visible through the open hatch, we kind of have to paint up the gun breech. So I'm just going to take, in this case, some Vallejo Game Color Ghost Grey, which is kind of like a, a slightly off-white, and we're just going to paint up the gun breech assembly. I'm not going to be too precious about it, I'm just going to hammer down a few layers of paint just to build up this color. So the trick with dealing with spraying colours like white or grey or these really pale colours is just really thin coats and just slowly build it up.
So I'm just going to come in with some gun metal and just paint in the uh, gun breach. Again, I'm not being overly careful, I'm just going to slabber in some paint. Again, it can only really be viewed from a very, very narrow angle. And again, it's just to be covered. So just make sure that uh, if someone decides to shine a torch in there for whatever bloody reason, that they can say that we haven't detailed it. And since we're at it, we might as well add a little bit of chips using the sponge method. And in this case, we're just going to take some German Camo uh, Black Brown, my go-to scratch colour. And I'm just going to uh, fairly give this a good working over. Now this will probably drive Panther guys mad. So I'm painting the inner face hull red, which is meant to be like the red oxide. I've made this color way too bright, so I'm going to have to go back in and tone it down because it doesn't look like the red oxide at all. And this could be completely wrong. It's just um, some photographs I saw and some other guys' models tend to paint it this color. So I might have to go back and undo this. Uh, we'll see. And again, it's added some scratching to the inner face there just to kind of tone down the red. but. Uh, I decided to add it, and it could be totally wrong, but sure, what can you do? So now I'm just going to keep continuing with the build process of our turret. So with the basic uh, turret form assembled, now I'm going to start adding some rolled steel texture to the armor plates. So again, we're going to our tried and tested uh, Mr. Surface 1200, or sorry, 600 should I say. And I'm just going to start applying this with a flat brush. As you can see, I'm not being overly precious. I apply it reasonably thick and I just start stippling it with an old brush just to impart a slight texture on it. As you can see here, I'm just work in small sections. It's exactly the same as we used in part three, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. So now we're just going to come in with a really fine sanding sponge. Just very gently sand some of this back. I don't want to completely undo it, but there are some areas where I went in a little bit too heavy. So I'm just going to try to uniform this ever so slightly. So 
So speaking of cast textures, the Commander's Cupola is actually a cast feature. So as you can see here, I'm really laying down the Mr. Surface thick here. I'm not being too precious about any of this, I'm just applying it quite thick, quite haphazard. And I'm also working it quite a lot too, just to impart a bit of a texture with it. So I'm going to apply one coat, allow it to dry about maybe three quarters of the way, and then apply another coat directly on top of it. And that's going to give us a lovely cast texture. So then I'm going to start working on the mount for the commander's machine gun. So this was a piece from the uh, Eduard photo etch set. Now this took me a little while to get this to work. I'm not really used to working with photo etch and trying to get um, forms that are somewhat circular is actually a bit tricky. So I used the rolling method where you just take a dowel and you roll it on your cutting mat and you'll get a curve. And it kind of worked. I'm pretty happy in how it came out. It's not 100% perfect but it's far nicer than the overscaled uh, kit piece. Now a missing detail on the cupola is actually the periscopes, but the Eduard set actually includes these, so we're going to start forming these up. Now I make life a little bit tricky for myself by trying to be smart, that I cut the back um, edge off, or the, the back panel off the periscopes, trying just to save time, um, because at the end of the day the turret seems to be closed on the real vehicle, so you're not going to see the back of the periscopes. So I snip off the backs as you can see here and just trying to kind of save time however it actually kind of makes it a little bit tricky to line these periscopes up correctly inside their housing so uh, if anyone's trying to like build along with this uh, build up the periscopes in their entirety just or especially with the back plate and um, still attached so you can actually just make life easier to line these up correctly So once all the periscopes are in place, you do get a pretty nice little result and it's far better than leaving them blank. So it's a nice little addition. So another little detail that we're going to add here is just the, the limiter for the swing of the um, commander's hatch. So it's a small little photo etch piece included in the Eduard set. And then we're going to start adding the tinsy tiny um, aiming fane. Just locate it right in front of the uh, commander's periscope facing uh, to the 12 o'clock. This was actually a bit tricky to get right and it did require some reference photos just to align that correctly. Now we're just going to add the mount for the AA machine gun. Now I could not get any decent photographs or the two photographs of 126. I couldn't see if the support arm or the mounting arm for the MG34 was actually mounted on this vehicle you just can't see it now obviously there's no machine gun in place however I just couldn't tell if they actually had put the um, swing arm here that I'm mounting now um, on the vehicle or not I kind of er erred on the side of caution and just put it in just to be safe again it's kind of obscured by the angle and the smoke so it could well be there Now I'm just going to add the final details to the cupola just by adding the grab handle for the commander's hatch.
and with that our couple is finished and this was a very enjoyable little build over a few evenings it was pretty much a little project in itself and i really did enjoy it and it kind of goes to show you that you can get really you do get a lot out of adding that little extra bit to your models you know you get a little bit more sense of accomplishment i'm really happy i went that extra mile so now this uses one of the older um versions of mantlis this mantle is actually from a, a dragon panther and it was being very kindly donated to me by uh, Mark on the Panther Research Group on Facebook. So thank you very much, Mark, for supplying me with this. Now, I did add some cast numbers to the side of the mantlet. Again, I don't know if it's 100% correct. I've seen it in one photograph and thought it was cool. And my Panther shall have it too. It might not be correct. Again, I couldn't find many photos on it, so I can always go back and remove it if it's not correct. And now we're just going to start adding some cast texture now to our gun mantle using our Mr. Surface technique. Again, exactly the same as we did on the Coppola. And there's our gun mantle ready to go. Now I did have to widen the actual mount for the gun itself to actually accommodate the Aber gun barrel that was actually made for the Tamiya mantlet. And speaking of gun barrels, well this is my first time using um, a product from Aber and it's actually fantastic. I've never used any of their stuff before. I just saw it online so I picked it up and it is fantastic. It's literally a little kit itself and it's uh, oh, like I really enjoyed every second working on this gun barrel. Like just how beautiful that gun break is, it's fantastic. But since this was actually designed for the mantlet that's actually supplied in the Tamiya kit, it didn't quite fit the, the dragon mantlet, so I just had to come in with a rotor tool and widen the dragon mantlet ever so slightly. Again, the detail on this gun barrel is like it's fantastic, it's phenomenal. Right down to like the really minute treading. Now again, kind of I've been a little bit careful not to strip the treading by mistake, but now we have like the gun break in place, and now we're just adding the small, tinsy, tiny retaining bolt just to keep the muzzle break in place. So it's a tiny little piece of photo hitch. And now we're going to mount our gun mantlet to our our turret. Now I had to do a little bit of modifying to get the dragon mantlet to fit to a Tamiya hull or Tamiya turret should I say but after a little bit of uh, just filing and removing a little bit of material I got it to fit pretty well. So I'm gonna leave the gun barrel off for now just to make um, ease of handling just a little bit handier or easier. So, adding more details, so this must be the rotor shield, I believe, if, I, I don't know what, fully what it's called. I imagine it's like a rotor shield to protect the traverser and the elevation of the gun from um, shrapnel. So the kit supplied piece is way over, over scale, it's very thick. Again, this is well, a 20 something year old kit. Uh, so we're just going to go to the photo etch supplied by Eddie Yard. So there's quite a lot of folds in this and it was a little bit tricky because I don't have like proper folding tools but these basic pliers do just about get the job done. And I'm just keeping the kit original piece nearby just to uh, see that I get the profile correct. I'm just going to mount in place with a little bit of liquid CA glue. And then I'm just going to ensure that this is mated to the um, turret roof. Now it shouldn't be completely flush to the uh, mantle, there should be a slight over um, hang to it. That's why I kind of just pop the blade in just to pop it up ever so slightly. 
Now, these actually tr prove out to be a little bit tricky. These are the actual, like, retaining bolts and brackets for this uh, rotor shield. And I couldn't find any proper photos because of like, how this thing is mounted. So it took me a while just to find um, how best to go about that, but uh, I got there in the end. So now it's going to add some of the smaller uh, fittings to the turret roof, such as these lifting eyes. Now these actually proved a little bit tricky, they're very fiddly, they kept being knocked out of place so I have to keep coming back and uh, repositioning them again and again and again. So now we're going to add the commander's cupola to the turret roof. So you can see there's actually a slight gap between the cupola and the turret roof. That's actually meant to be there. So if you actually check out some of the uh, photo photographs from the time or any museum examples, there's actually about you know, a three or four millimeter gap or even a bit wider between the uh, cupola and the turret roof. And with that small bit done, our turret is now complete. So now we're going to move on to adding the final details to our panther. So we're going to go back and start adding the spare track links to the um, storage racks on the rear of the vehicle. And yes, those are the retaining pins with photo -width chains. And they are as fiddly as they look. This took me ages to do. And I'm probably going to have to come back and uh, get them to behave a little bit more realistically. So I really should have taken the tow cables off the model when I was doing this, but I'm stubborn, they're in place, and they're going to stay in place. So I'm going to have to work around them. And on the other side, I only have one track link in the storage rack, kind of dangling there after being damaged by the shell fire, and the other one's just going to be empty. So I'm just going to have those uh, retaining pins just hanging, hanging from their chains just to kind of make it look a bit interesting. And with that, our construction is finally complete. So we finally got there in the end. This was quite an interesting build. It did take, what, the better part of almost three months to get this far. But uh, it was been really enjoyable. I've actually learned a massive amount during this build. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I need to do something. So I'm just going to add the few shores and plates in conjunction to the photograph. So there's only really two visible on the rear of the vehicle here. And on the other side, there's a, it's not photographs, so I'm just going to put one shores and plate in there. And I'm going to leave it at that. And with that, our build is finally finished. So now we're ready to go prime and start painting and weathering this model. So that's going to be in subsequent episodes. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. This has been a, a really interesting uh, project and I've certainly learned a massive amount of new techniques. And I'm really looking forward to maybe going in into future projects and even push the envelope even further in terms of techniques and uh, adding even more detail in upcoming builds. 
So guys, thank you so much. Again, massive thank you to both Mark and Steve for uh, supplying me with kit and uh, information to build this project. So guys, thank you so much. Again, it's just one of those wonderful things about our community that we look after each other. And especially now as the world's kind of starting to go a bit mad, just uh, everyone take care, look after each other, and I'll catch you in the next video. I've been Shane. Bye-bye.